Oh, that's not even what I said, people, and I've started the video. Oh, man, you hear this? You hear this? This meaniness of his? <sighs> Why so do mean. I? Why are we here? Just to suffer. Every day I feel my yes. right arm. I feel the phantom pain. Anyway. Hey, hey, people. Epilepsy warning. God. I'm serious. You have about three seconds. Okay, epilepsy warning for literally everyone here. I'm going oh, to give boy. you a bit more seconds just in case. Because apparently, uh, that's a thing. How dare you be Sweden, you son of a boy! Now How dare you be Sweden? How dare you be Sweden? You said I'm gonna be Sweden, aka neutral. You son yeah. of you a boy! You evolving. betrayed me like Let's this! Being neutral does not mean betrayal, Fable. Time. High fleet is it means betrayal. He's like the French. He's betrayed me. That's not how that works at all. Totally is. Also, speaking of which, have you all heard about the insanity that is going on in Paris, essentially? Uh, no. What's uh, due, due, kind of due to the fact that uh, Paris actually has a... A rampant, uh, a rampant case of pickpockets, like basically people stealing from everyone as soon as they can, specifically people stealing from tourists and stuff. Uh -huh. A bunch of people have been kind of come, uh, have been fighting back by, by literally making, by literally having tasers and other such things to shock and or possibly maim uh, pickpockets. At one point, because of the Olympics being in Paris. A bunch of people, like a bunch of people, Americans mostly, made some, basically trap their, um, kind of make like a booby trap in some of their fake bags. They basically bought really fancy bags that were fake, put, and this is going to be gross, they put, they put a poop trap in the, in their bag, and when a pickpocket opened it, it literally sprung and blew up in their face. I'm not even kidding because because the police refuse to do anything about the problem. Americans are taking it into their own hands, and people are literally getting hurt because of it. To be honest, it's bad people who are literally stealing from others, so it's not. So it's kind of justified at that point. Yeah, when people uh, are uh, when people see nothing's being done, they'll usually do something about it themselves, which could end up to be make things worse. But anyway. On to the video. Is self described as a yeah, it's, it's a whole now thing. That all the epileptic are either dead or convulsing. Let's well, have then. a pleasant time. High Fleet is self described as a fleet carrier sim programmed entirely oh. inside an ice fishing shack by a single Russian man. Wow, personally, I describe it as an immersive trauma sim because the hardest part isn't the combat, it's staying calm when all your senses are drowned out by the it could be staying calm in the bat. Anyway. Dream of gunfire. The game takes place on the fictional desert planet of Kazakhstan. After a what? messy political revolution, rebel forces have taken over. You play as Grand Duke Mark Sayadi Solensky. That's a long name. Russian Emperor himself, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, to restore order. Unfortunately, our forces to the south got glassed by thermonuclear warheads. So oh. you could say it's not going too well. Our last ditch effort is to push north towards the rebel controlled city of Kiva. Our objective a plutonium reactor the size of a city responsible okay. for the vast majority of power generation across the planet the hope is once we capture it the enemy will have to surrender or at least negotiate a truce however you're vastly outnumbered outgunned and flat out broke Ooh. First, let's get to the controls your word of the day skewmorphism every What's part happening? of the ui looks like the real world equivalent of what it's meant to represent on oh. the map you're looking top down from the cockpit which is crammed with whatever communications devices you've got installed this may look overwhelming, but compared to an actual Soviet cockpit, it's comparatively simple. Generally, if you make visual contact, it's already too late. The enemy has already spotted our chemtrail, so there's no point acting innocent. Which is why we oh. use all of this shit. At the top left, you've got your rate. Interesting. There is, looks like there's a lot of stuff here to work with, though. Accurate at and least. high resolution. The good radar, also known as the overpriced radar, has a range of 700 kilometers. Check this out. Not only does it locate, but if I make 
make contact, mark it on the map, and maintain course for exactly an hour, I can mark the new position, take a ruler between the two points, and find out the velocity and bearing of a signal. But that is very interesting that they've gone through all this effort on the radar. But then again, it is the overworld map for them. Basically. I have no idea what we're looking at, to be honest. Uh, we're looking at a radar of everything going on around him. Uh, their flying fleet, basically. You have to send radio signal to receive it, which means if you see them, they can definitely see you. Oh. So sometimes the best option well is then. to turn it off and start panicking. <laughs> Unfortunately, this sound means our infrared search and track system is working correctly. What does this mean? It means there's a ballistic missile coming towards us. And oh. since infrared is low range at 300 kilometers, it oh. also means brace yourself. Oh! In Which basically, do you understand what that meant, Fable? <laughs> uh oh, what does that mean? Uh, basically, the missile's moving too fast. For them to accurately make an offensive move against it, because they're already within range. So, uh, yeah. That oh happened. My. Also, I need to show you this one video of a, ra of a raven guard at what- not a raven guard. God damn it, what was it? It was a uh, Blood Raven and a uh, Necron. Contrast, Electronic Intelligence, or ELINT, works off passive radar emission, so it's undetectable, long range, and looks like a fucking pretend phone for kids. Oh, it's, it's one of those old, pilot. like, polar phones. Look at it, see the flashing red light which says, alert, danger close, and I look away, <laughs> trying to guess whatever the hell that means. I kind of want to force Fable to play this just because he'll freak out and not know what he's doing and press random buttons. Oh my god, I already don't know what's going on. I'm already freaking out. Well, now, Fable, you are the tank commander. Oh. The commander of the fleet. Do then something. There is the radar jammer. You can click it for stressful okay, I say we. I say we invade, um, Tommen's house because he's neutral and I, and I hate neutrality. That's not how that works, but okay. Shot dead in the street, an experience that many Americans can relate to. But as the bullet approaches, you can briefly become invisible. This oh. amazing ability allows you to sneak <laughs> away from the approaching bullet. However, the only problem is that bullets are typically much faster. Finally, you've got the radio, which intercepts radio transmission in real time. You'll have to dial in the correct frequency, tune the signal, and get a bearing on its direction. You only get a short window of time to do this before you lose the transmission. Okay. Even if you get it, surprise. Surprise, it's usually encrypted. Even if oh. you decrypt it, surprise, it's literally a trucker asking for gas every single time. The I mean, a trucker asking for gas could... Be you could use that for road information or something. I, I'm trying to think of what you would use this information for. <laughs> Tactical knowledge of where every trucker stops to urinate is vital to the success of your campaign. Oh yeah, There's so just following roads, basically. To or right. at least knowing where roads are is obviously useful. Oh, I'm not sure how you would. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Are buttons to commit war crimes. Oh! And if you flick the switch, you can control the number of atrocities you'd like to commit. Finally, oh. I can actually talk about the game. In this game, modern warfare has done away with tanks and aviation. Instead, okay. you fly gigantic 30,000 ton blocks of steel, which guzzle 2,000 cubic tons of pressurized methane every thousand kilometers. This does sound like something the Imperium would make. ...with a carbon emission rating between who cares and it's probably gonna get warmer. Every ship is unique Well, if I send a request, it's real. It has nearly made me cry. It's not spoilers, it just made me cry. Alright, we'll get to it eventually, Vince. You... It... These things take time. I'm confused as to what this is, even. You're... Chrono! We're doing a reaction. Okay, well, we're gonna have to wait till this ends. Uh, uh, basically, uh, basically, what we gotta have to do in this is we have to take over a certain power plant because our other forces have been destroyed. So we're driving this whole fleet towards the power plant and trying to survive. Yeah. Just saw the first nice. message. I always see the messages. It's just I usually don't respond when we're doing so. Complimentary to the rest of your. But yeah, please don't play alerts when we're doing. 
This point, which you pick at the start of the campaign. Every ship piece is modular, which can be swapped out and Ooh. modified as you see fit. There's no safety or hand holding, so by all means, detach the bridge from your flagship. Also, ship. hello, Chrono. Tumble to your death and lose the game. Well then, our commanding squad, Grand Duke Marks, is dead. Oh yes, I don't know if you did that on purpose there. I wonder who played that. It was you, Chrono. I literally saw it. Anyway. But if you can resist the urge of destroying or selling your flagship, we should get moving. Because okay. it's only a matter of time before some Soviet babushka alerts the authorities. Which is something that actually happens in war, where just normal people will alert, obviously, other people about it. Start your engines and pick a destination. Whatever your choice, expect heavy resistance. To make matters more complicated, you can't just send your flagship because it's a fat, heavy piece of shit that tops oh. out at 90 kilometers an hour. Why That's... is this an issue? Because the enemy will spot us, raise the alarm, and send every strike fleet to our location. For That's, a tip, uh, if you start hearing the not music, good. You're already dead, which is why I usually just dismantle my flagship into a 2x2 two two cardboard box and okay. fly it into the desert. I can't lose if I can't be found. Don't send the ship. I'm sorry, Chrono, but I'm unwolfing you. I take away your ears and tail. You're no longer Chrono. So instead, we send a strike group ahead of the main fleet to kill But yeah, this is, you have, the entire, you have the entire fleet you're flying through to get to there. Or they can scream for help. Oh Combat no, Matt just, un you take your just unwolfed your chrono. Yes. Speed and low profile is the name of the game. Pretty much you have a small fleet and... Uh, you know what? I wish I had more games like this where it's strategical. Where you're using a small force and you just get better, better stuff you go on. I want a mecha game like that. If anyone in the comments know mecha games like that, please tell me. Drywall for because I like playing the gorillas. Ten minutes and return to the PC. Then watch as you get locked up. I'm not good at those games, but I like playing them. Trial by fire, but eventually you'll get the hang of Ooh. it. Typically, you fill your magazine, unload on the enemy, and try to live long enough to reload. And yes, <laughs> you always fight one v three. Oh damn! And yes, depending on the weather and time of day, you're going to see a lot of rain. Conversely, you're not going to see much else. Think of every ship in this game as a crab. Punch through its exoskeleton, and there's nothing but soft, tender flesh. Okay. The slightest crack in its armor, the slightest puncture in its crusty, and you'll devour. I didn't whole. need those words spoken in my head. Can I unmech you? Take your mech suit. Sorry, but you can't do that. It's part of me. If you try touching it, it will squash you, and you'll become just a giant tomato. Well, what a giant tomato looks Mac. like. Mac, I'm gonna un. I'm gonna unwolf your mech. That's not how that works. Whole thing. It is special. now diagram of whatever ship you're targeting on the bottom right. You can okay. use this to figure out the weak points of any high altitude crust Interesting. Station. Fun fact, pressurized methane is very explosive. Oh. Locate their fuel tanks, set them on fire, and the chain reaction will usually blow the whole ship. Yeah, that's why you usually try to make fuel tanks and armor, or ammo depots inconspicuous. So, uh... We get it together. No, you will not do anything together like that. But yeah, hitting yes, the. <laughs> Actually, I played in uh, War Thunder and uh, World of Tanks. Hitting the fuel tank or basically where the ammo is stored is basically a guaranteed death for. Do you need to know? Well, you know why. You know why. I shouldn't have to explain that to you why. No, is there long-term health consequences? No, you will not do that, Fable. Ship that knocks out the pilot each time I make oh, a turn? Yeah. yeah, probably. But afterwards, oh. there's a lot of burning debris and <laughs> Knocks out the pilot you because you're going too fast. Before we can properly land. You're on a limited timer, and you can't save everything. Or everyone. Because the game oh, will automatically try to save members trapped inside the debris. However, those aren't mine. I should know, because I don't build evac pods on my ship. Oh, Think wow. About it. The Titanic would have never crashed if it Alright, no later, Chrono. Later. Go have fun. Well, I'll see you later.
The passengers had no option for retreat. They'd plug the hole with their bloated carcasses and save the day. What so the hell? <laughs> no, the that's not how that will work. Casualties as fatalities. First, we secure the fuel and munitions because if they burn, they explode, taking our payday along with it. Then check your options. Crew oh. quarters contain souvenirs for recruiting potential allies. Captain's okay. quarters contains clues to the location of aforementioned allies. Useful, but not essential. Radio room gives a piece of a current encryption key. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Totally and completely worthless. If you know a single keyword, you can decrypt the entire transmission. Oh, that leaves us with the only thing that actually matters. Spare parts we can strip down and sell for money. Gun parts, missiles, radars, aircraft, whatever it is, it's worth a lot of cash back in town. If they got that money symbol, it's time to harvest as quickly as possible. Sometimes there's a hazard warning, which means a 50% chance of horrific accident if you don't put on protective gear. But okay. that takes time, and I don't have a lot of time. Time, but I do have a lot of expendable, replaceable human beings. You know what they say? Oh you can't no! Cook an omelet without breaking health and safety. This is something Fable knows. What health and safety? No, breaking health and safety. I'm a Borderlands your pants. What? I'm a Borderlands your pants. I don't know what he means by that, everyone. I am very confused. Anyway. After your profitable I, cleanup, It just you means I'm gonna shell, sell shade your pants. That's literally it. Oh. Open the hatch. Welcome it's to town. Nothing special. It's fucking... Okay. Borderlands well, 2. Some... Not, not 3. 3 is trash. Mm, 3 is trash. Anyway. It's the only moment of serene tranquility you'll ever get in this game. Usually, oh. there's a random event which influences the worldview and politics of your crew depending on how you respond. Okay. For example, your men start taking slaves from the captured enemy captive. What? what do you do? Option one, slavery bad, no slavery. Option two, slavery good, receive 5,000 credits. Option what? three, slavery good, but not efficient. Assign a slavery officer to oversee and optimize what slavery. What the hell? <laughs> thousand credits choices are not made that equal. is such strange choices you can make some are straight up better at some point in the game rising nuclear ash keeps dropping the temperature your general tells you the men are freezing to death suggesting that you keep the car engine running and burn a small amount of fuel even if you're currently parked if you agree temporary plus free morale bonus to all of your men and a permanent drain on fuel supply for the rest uh. of the game if you say no absolutely nothing happens it's never brought up again World wow is used for skill checks along that feels the story uneven and for charismatic negotiation with Tarkans, former Russian generals who are currently in hiding from rebel forces. Appeal to their sense of morality, give them a nice Funko Pop, and they just might join your campaign. So that uh, I can immediately sell So basically ship getting ship. people that weren't originally on your side back onto your side in order to fight the war. I do hope Chrono has a good stream. I don't know what he's streaming, but he's doing a thing. Oh, speaking of Borderlands, do you know they're making four? Yeah, but I don't have a big they, call. They dropped the trailer for four, and it's possibly the worst possible time to ever announce it since the failure of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the worst possible timing to talk about that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway market value. This involves giving a speech, the effect oh. of which is specific to each character's sensibilities. Mainly, okay. I just rant about how much I fucking hate the poor, and <laughs> how much money we're gonna make after what we the hell? Kill, sorry, after we shove a gun barrel of democracy down the collective throats of a current government. My what impassioned speech is often very convincing. Tarkans Please. are valuable assets, which can be called up during the campaign to ask for a small loan of 10,000. Repeatedly, until they no <laughs> longer City. Yeah, apparently until they no longer want to talk to you. Oh boy. Effectively, a gas station. We drop oh. into the Gazprom depot to get scammed by shitty gas prices by some dude wearing a sack. Every <laughs> gas station also comes equipped with a ship works for ship installations oh. and repair. You can do this undocked at low speed, but for serious repairs, you're gonna have to manually land the ship. Welcome to parking, the quickest and most frequent cause of a game over. 
Much like jumping God down damn. a flight of stairs without legs, do not attempt to do this without landing gear. And remember <laughs> to park your flagship responsibly. Sometimes it'll count balancing off a cliff as a completely valid parking what? spot. You'll return to the town screen only to see your <laughs> flagship tumble and crash into the abyss. Also, for some reason, after parking your ship, you can still control it. You might think it's a bug, but it's never been fixed, so I suspect it's working Why? as intended. Moving on, every gas station has an in-store self check out to legally okay. purchase special munitions to be used against the same government that sold it to me. Compatibility depends Sounds on Sounds about right, caliber. honestly. For reference, the smallest caliber in this game is a 37 millimeter machine gun. This goes up to 180 millimeters, which is the Ooh. size of your average artillery. And there's no option for weapon groups, so typically we fire every single gun at the same time. Okay. As far as I care, there's only two types of ammo, armor piercing and proximity fuse. The former for cutting up ships and the latter for chopping up aircraft. The rest is a complete meme. Incendiary okay. starts fires, which implies that 2,000 cubic tons of burning methane just wasn't enough. That and is a good point. And lets you do this. Honestly, I really do like it, but when I remember that I'm effectively shooting money, my brow begins to sweat and I start to feel nauseous. But yeah! Weapons like that cost a lot to make, which obviously costs them a lot to, you know, deal with. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh my, oh dear, oh die. Anyway. Besides that, there's a bunch of bombs, missiles, and rockets you can use to airstrike the enemy before they can even start their engines. Cool. With that out of the way, you should remember that any military campaign is largely financial. And yeah. the beautiful phrase in the Russian language is Daimenya Tvoyo Dengi. Pajalista. We <laughs> are going to trade please. convoys, murder their escort, and capture the trade ships so we can hold them for ransom. Because that is something that armies would guys, do. God is with us on this campaign, and thus piracy is absolutely ethical, encouraged, and the best way of making money, hands down. Besides selling ballistic nuclear weapons on the oh. open market. Speaking of ballistic what? nuclear weapons, why haven't we used them yet? Because, as your general puts... Ooh, nuclear weapons... <laughs> Uh, knowing Seth, I feel like I know how this is going to end. Right. So, uh, let's go in and see where this is going. Once the genie's out of the bottle, it's never going back inside. But oh. I'm okay with that, because I only have one wish to make. I oh. wish for a nuclear winter. Oh my god. Oh, the beginning of nuclear war, war crime. <laughs> well, let's see. One is a tragedy, but the death of millions is a good start. Oh, However, in God. retrospect, this wasn't the best idea. You see, we didn't use them because we couldn't. We didn't use them because they have more than us. Oh. Considerably more. And right now... They're heading towards us. So, word of advice, they won't touch the button as long as you don't. This is basically a uh, mutually assured destruction idea and uh, how no one wants to use nukes. They're just deterrents to keep other people from using nukes. Oh dear. It's basically pointing guns at each other and saying, we won't shoot if you don't. And that's how it works for the most part. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's why we don't talk about it. Funny enough, my grandmother was alive during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and she was just going to the store. No, wait, I think she was in high school. So she was just seeing uh, President Kennedy come on the screen. Onward we go. You can start the nuclear war, but they're going to finish it. Finally, if you actually want to win the game, pre-built ships aren't good enough. You have to make your own. You do this by ah, clicking Shipworks in the main menu. Unfortunately, the latest patch has I removed gauge. the background sound effects because some- For those that don't know over here is my friend Gage, who is a voice actor for me. If you ever watch that uh, one comic I made that's over on YouTube, which not a lot of people have, but I still am very proud of all the work that I did and everyone else did on it. I'm happy to be a voice. 
A voice in the choir. I know. Somebody kept complaining. Luckily, I still have my old copy, so I can still tune in to the soothing <laughs> ASMR of a Middle Eastern repair shop. Here's <laughs> some of the projects I made after stealing and taking credit for them from a friend. The what block, the, hell? the brick, the cock and ball accelerator, what which generates hell? torque directly <laughs> from the phallus. The box, the Death Star of David, work in the progress. Hell? The windmill. Oh, I don't think I can show that. Missing. The fly swatter, yeah. also known as the make shit crash. What the hell? Enemies will I like how. You cut straight away to footage missing. Instead, makes them crash into the ground. Yeah. Then, when you run out of ammo, you become the ammo. Oh. Like, why did I make this? And <laughs> many more. Hell? Eventually, I realized that armor plates are functionally no different to reinforced hull pieces, except oh. they weigh three times as much. So oh. I made this abomination. It can oh. take out every strike fleet in the game back oh, to back no. with no breaks. Yes. You can literally sit in the first town, wait until Grandma calls the Gestapo, and watch as the entire rebel military explode in front of me. I love this game, which brings me to my main critique. There's not enough, and I want more. It's like a slice of cake oh that I God. want, but I can't have, because I can't <laughs> legally imprison the developer until he bakes the aforementioned cake. Unless I... Unless I somehow invite him over, no, passes, burn his passport, and cuff him to the work table. No. Hypothetically, of course. Also, if you're worried about epilepsy, just know that modern copies of a game have been sanitized for your delicate eyes. That's you can good. Set your preference in the options menu. Oh, you can change all it. All the seizure complaints. Oh, Glitch dear High is now just a bunch of fuzzy lines. But on release, Glitch High was the equivalent of burning out your cornea with a radioactive oh, dear lens flare. It was actually even funny because the options used to be flipped so you'd set it to glitch oh high, no it actually be glitch high and very soon both your retinas would cease to function and die if you're interested you can grab a copy <laughs> on steam or you can physically steal it by cutting the fiberglass cables outside your house and intercepting the individual packets of light i don't As think always, that's how that more works content to come hopefully more often <laughs> so stay tuned a warm no, of course it works. Go cut your internet field, connection. Generously Do it. And bankrolling these don't listen to fate. Don't truly listen to gauge people. I, sorry, I almost said fable force of habit. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> this, I'm innocent this time. This time. This time. I know what I said, and I mean it. Sure. But yeah, if you guys like our stuff. And, uh, well, you know, well enough, the Patreon's over there. But only if you can afford it, and only if you really like our stuff. Because supporting us means that we can do this more often. And that way Fable can get his cookies. I don't know what kind of cookies they are, but yeah, he'll get his cookies. I will say, I'm not sure if I'll... A lot of these games obviously take a lot of time... And unfortunately, now that I have a full-time job, that, that gets a lot harder, so yeah. Still, thank you all so much for watching this. If you like what we're doing here, please do consider following. Check out Fable stuff. He's, uh... Funny enough, he's doing a w level 1 Dark Souls playthrough of the original Dark Souls, so that's gonna be fun. I've been in somewhat of the videos... He's been the health bar. Yes, I've been the, his health bar telling him what to do. Yeah, and you know, the problem is I'm in the last two uh, lords, which is um, I still have uh, the four kings, Sif, and um, the bed of chaos, and I'm possibly going to do the DLC. And to those of you who know how Sartorius is, I'm going to be in pain. Yes. He already not, defeated. Not Sartorius. Sartorius. Who is Sartorius? What the I don't know. You make up the name. I did. I live a happy life. Okay. There's nothing else to that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said okay. So, um, so yeah, I'm literally dealing. I'm going to be dealing with the DLC and Artorius Manus. And Kalamid are some of the worst bosses in existence. For those, also for worse those, in, the, in the sense that they hurt. Mm -hmm. For those wondering why I muted the audio right there is because some of the audio has been, you know, getting copyright. So I just wanted to be sure because I don't know. Other than yeah, that, I, I would know. just cut this part of the video then.
But I do like Seth's stuff. Even though Seth is kind of crazy. I don't... I have no idea on his view of reaction videos, but eh. I hope he's at least okay with them. I'm not sure if he cares. Then again, he's a very is big there? man. And if he somehow, by God, finds our videos, I will be surprised because we are tiny. Is it okay if I put my uh, casting call club in your promoting yourself channel? Sure. Okay. Anyway, thank you all so much, and we'll see you later. I don't know how we stretch this video so much, but yeah, see you guys later.